Hello viewers and welcome to a new STM32 world. Uh, probably basic video I'm going to do today. Today I am going to talk about a peripheral that is present in I think all STM32 MCUs which is called a RTC or real time clock. Um, the real time clock is uh, actually if we look at the where is it? Here. Uh, the block diagram of... Uh, I'm using an STM32F401 today because I still, on my desk, happen to have... Oh, it doesn't show. Uh, I happen to have uh, the, um, the uh, relay board uh, hooked up still. And if you look at the block diagram on it, of an STM32F401, but all the other uh, STM32 uh, MCUs are the same. You will see, you will find down here, you will have something called a RTC or real time clock. Now, the real time clock uh, is a separate module that is clocked by a low frequency oscillator uh, and it will basically keep track of date and time. Uh, it needs to be adjusted because there's no sort of battery, I mean, there's no stored time. You can get some external chips that actually keep this from a coin cell battery, but, and and you could actually back up this with a battery on the STM32 using the battery voltage, uh, but under normal circumstances, this one, when you restart the processor, uh, MCU will uh, start at zero, so you need to find a way to adjust this clock, but that is a separate story that could be a cell, it could be USB, it, uh, several modules, but today we are just going to talk about the actual real-time clock. Uh, where did... Uh, now the real-time clock... Um, is is can be clocked from different sources there is a low speed external oscillator where you can hook up a 32.768 uh, kilohertz crystal that is a typical clock crystal that odd frequency is because it's neatly dividable uh, down to precisely one uh, hertz uh, that's why they choose that one, uh, that frequency. But most development boards, you won't necessarily have that crystal on board. Uh, so alternatively, it can be clocked from a low speed internal oscillator, which is typically running at 32 kilohertz. Now, but that, if you look at the data sheet here, that can run anywhere from 17 to 47 kilohertz. So it is notoriously imprecise. It can also drift by temperature, etc., uh, etc. Et it is uh, not a very good clock to uh, run a timer if if the time is is important in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but let's track a, take a look at Cubamax how this is configured. First of all, we have up under the system core RCC. You can see here, we can actually enable an external uh, crystal oscillator. In this case, uh, we need this pin, which is used for something else. It's actually used for a button on this particular board, but we could normally hook up a crystal, a low speed crystal, typically 32.768 uh, kilohertz uh, crystal, um, but we choose not to do that. If we look down under timers, you will have a separate RTC timer, and we can just activate a clock source here, and we can activate the calendar. If you want to, optionally, uh, don't run it with a calendar, but we, we have activated both in this case. Now let's look at the actual clock tree, and you will see in the top left corner here, we actually have a, a, a multiplexer, RTC clock multiplexer, where we can choose a source. Uh, as I mentioned, by default, it will run on the low speed internal oscillator at 32 kilohertz, but that is ridiculously, ridiculously imprecise. So normally we will prefer an input frequency of 32.768 kilohertz, uh, 
on the low speed external and that will run straight into the clock and you'll end up having a, a fairly precise clock but in order for that to be selectable we have to have that crystal hooked up but another option that i kind of tend to use is my high speed external um, crystal now down here while, while these crystals are trimmed because th that exact crystal 32.768 is used in pretty much every single clock or watch there is out there so they are fairly precise uh, there's a cheap one uh, available on JLC PCB which is actually made by Seiko uh, so yeah they know a bit about time so um, you can get them fairly precise but if you look at a typical crystal I'm using as a high speed external crystal they're running at 16 or faster 20 25 uh, megahertz and they are actually fairly precise they're not maybe not quite as good as a, a watch crystal but they're still like within 20 parts per million ppm uh, or 10 ppm uh, so that kind of uh, equates to a, a clock drift or a 24 hour period a day it will drift with about a second max if you actually calculate that now if we're using the high speed uh, external uh, it says e signal here to drive the rtc via the rtc mocks uh, you can see here we have a what do they actually call this Okay, you have a divider, uh, HSE divider, it's called, uh, where you can divide this uh, frequency down. And uh, I basically just picked 25 in this case, because if I divide this by 25, I get a nice uh, integer number here. So we have a, a frequency going to the RTC of 640 kilohertz. Now, this needs to be further divided down and you actually need to get down to exactly one hertz so you need to find a way to divide this down to uh, one hertz so it needs to be divided by 640,000 to get down there if we go over and look at the RTC configuration down here you'll see that there is two pre-dividers find it down here and these two values I just came up with so if you divide that by do I have a calculator running anywhere I don't let's fire one up so if we take the 640 kilohertz and we divide that by 125 That became 5,120. So if we further divide by 5,120, we end up with exactly one hertz. So based on this frequency, that is a result of the high speed external divided by this divider here, this value needs to be further divided down by these values to get down to exactly one hertz. And one once that is configured then uh, we're pretty much ready and we can generate the code that's okay let's Here we go. So we now have the code generated. If we look at the code, uh, as usual with everything, it, the the call is actually started up here uh, at MXRTC in it, and we can look at the MXRTC in it, and you can see that it just takes those values and it initializes the RTC. Uh, I experimented down here by putting in some code by playing around with these values without having to reset uh, uh, that is entirely possible as well but it's not necessarily you can configure everything in cube mx now let's look at our main loop up here 
Well, I have my usual one. I print that tick once a second, but I have added a little bit here where I actually ask the RTC for a time and a date. Uh, and it's important to notice that there is a, an oddity with the RTC. You have to ask for both. If you ask for one of them and not the other, uh, then the values will not be correct. So you have to, when you ask for one, you have to ask for the other as well. Uh, it is mentioned in the source somewhere. You must call, you can actually see it down there in the note, you must call get date after get time to unlock the values in the higher order calendar shadow registers. So you have to ask for both. And then I simply print out the date and time and that is all. Now before I actually run this and show it running, uh, let me show you in this particular, in my relay board, I've actually uh, using, um, I'm using um, USB hit and up in my USB, where is that? Oh, it's up here. In the hit, I actually have the option of being able to set the time and date. Now, if we try to run this code, let's do it there. And let's stop this. We have the output down here. I also have a watch up here, uh, a clock up here, sorry. There we go. Uh, and it boots up. And you'll see it starts at midnight, but and it starts at uh, January 1st, 2001 at midnight. So, but the important thing is that tick times uh, prints out one every uh, second. And you'll see the numbers over here actually follows. And I have had this running for way more than 24 hours and it stays within a second over a 24 hour period. Uh, so, Let's try to run that little script I have here, uh, which I call set time, which uses the USB hit to actually push the time into the attached MCU. And there, so we'll see, I got a couple of bytes uh, over a receipt border and I set the date to the 25th, uh, no, <laughs> 2025, uh, 2nd of uh, September, and here is the time, and that matches if you look up here. So it is uh, switching to 1.02 now, and it ran really precise. So that's, uh, that's uh, RCC, and that is kind of all I can talk about right now. Uh, couple of uh, short videos in the future would be if I actually had an external battery backed up RTC uh, that would be cool uh, to supplement with this or to run the B battery on the NC MCU itself but I have not uh, set that up um, it would be interesting to try and I can actually do it on my STM32 World uh, Development Board because I do have a separate battery pin uh, on that and I have a jumper on the MCU board where I can disable the standard VCC into it so I can run a battery backup on that MCU. Very interesting to try and measure the... It, it uses microamps when it run in, in that mode. Now the problem with this board is I don't have a low speed crystal on it so uh, it might not make too much sense without the low speed uh, crystal um yeah uh, that's kind of what i wanted to say in this short video about the real time clock uh it is uh, the the interesting point i wanted to bring up in this video is the possibility of actually running this from the high-speed crystal which everybody have and these crystals are typically a bad crystal is about 20 ppm <coughs> a good crystal will be about 10 ppm so they are really rather precise that is 10 
every million counts there might be 10 off uh, so uh, yeah they, they are quite uh, quite precise uh, so that's pretty much all um, I wanted to say about this uh, as usual if you felt you learned anything please like and subscribe if you didn't like it please let me know why um, and um, as usual have a wonderful rest of the day